welcome back to the Notebook Check Tech review channel. We have a big one here today. A big gaming laptop that weighs four kilos and costs 2,800 euros. It's the MSI, I'm gonna say this without looking away, GT72S6QE Dominator Pro G. You got it right. It's a big gaming laptop and it's the latest in MSI's range of GT72 uh, devices. We actually tested uh, a number of versions of these. This, this one we tested in December. We tested the previous version uh, just, I think, uh, October or September before that. Uh, yesterday I did a video of the internals of this, which will give you an idea um, of what this machine is about. It's massively upgradable. It's uh, powerful to start with because it's got the GTX980M in this version. You can get a version with the GT. 9, a GTX 980, and that is actually number one in our gaming laptop charts on Notebook Check right now. So you can check out the review for that, you can check out the re review for this. But what I want to do in this video is give you an overview, a little bit of a dive down into some of the performance figures we've got, including overclocking performance figures, because this is an unlocked uh, quad core processor inside. And uh, what we'll do is during the middle of the video, we'll get down to details. But if you want to skip to the end, I'll give you the pros and the cons, the final score, and the score breakdown so if you feel feel free to fast forward to that but don't forget to give us a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the videos if you're enjoying these and if you want to get notifications of the videos as they go up let us start off by going through the specifications and it is a big long list of specifications some of them don't look like uh, anything abnormal but they are actually uh, quite uh, interesting specifications in themselves. We start off here with the Core i7-6820HK processor, a nominal 2.7 gigahertz, but this will clock all the way up to 3.7 gigahertz, and then overclocking on top of that. We'll talk a bit more about that later in this video. GeForce GTX 980M, almost, almost barrier-free laptop gaming here. There's a couple of limitations. Uh, I'm going to show you a lot of gaming scores later on in this video. Uh, the guys uh, know Check have done a lot of gaming tests on this one, so I'll give you those results. Uh, we're starting here with an 8 gig, uh, sorry, a 16 gig build here. So two slots out of four dim slots taken two times uh, eight gig, you can actually put four times 16 gig in this to take it up to a massive, massive 64 gig uh, of RAM. There's also a 17.3 inch uh, 69 full HD panel, it's IPS, we'll talk about the color accuracy of that later. And I also want to mention one, two, three, four uh, M2 style SSD slots, two of which are PCI Express enabled, so NVMe. And those two, so one of those two, is actually populated in this with a 256 version, yeah, 256 Toshiba. Uh, sorry, we have the NVMe version in this, sorry. We do have the PCI Express connected NVMe version, one slot taken. But there's a second slot next to it, and there's two more slots underneath. We take another little cover off, so you can get four SSDs. So you can get this in a double RAID 0 configuration. So two set up as a RAID 0, and then another two set up as a RAID 0. So in the exotic PC version that's number one in our charts, that's how they've configured it, and that's why it's 3,700 euros, and this one only, only 2,800 euros. So this is just coming with one SSD. Also coming with a spinning hard drive as well. So we've got a terabyte of spinning hard drive inside as well. That's a, uh, a Travel Star. Uh, Toshiba travel star inside there. Now here's um, some interesting stuff. We've got um, six USB 3, uh, 3.1 Gen 1 connections. We've got a USB C, which is a USB 3.1 Gen 2, with I believe a Thunderbolt controller. Uh, I have to check that for you. I don't think I might have that uh, slightly wrong there. But we've got uh, also uh, ports here. Um, let me just spin that round so you can see. On the other side, um, in fact, what we'll do is we'll zoom in in a minute on those ports. But there's an extra audio card here, so you get uh, four audio, audio input outputs, including uh, SP diff on one of those digital as well. So we've got a killer E2400 uh, gigabit Ethernet controller. That's supposed to be a low latency controller, so it sounds like normal gigabit Ethernet. It's supposed to be low latency, so that's obviously helping with your, your network gaming. 
and then we've got an optical drive in there as well. There's an 83 watt hour battery in this, fairly hefty, but uh, believe you me, we can sap that empty in a very short time if we really push this hard. Also on this version, I had a little bit of a problem with the battery. It's actually not connected correctly inside. It keeps disappearing from the system. So um, I will actually have to open this up and have a look to see whether that can be reconnected properly. But currently on this model, and that's why I've got it connected on mains, a slight issue there. So it's a massive unit here, 3.8 kilograms. This is clearly focused at gaming. You want to transport this to a location, spend a good few hours gaming, and then you're going to transport it back, probably in a car, to be honest. Uh, although I do believe there's a version of this which comes with a big backpack that you can put it in. So actually, four kilograms is not too bad unless you're taking other stuff with you. The power supply weighs 950 grams, as much as a tablet PC. The Surface Pro 3, for example, weighs, I think, 800 grams. So uh, yeah, we're up to five kilograms already, and then you've got your, your mouse and your possible additional keyboard as well. But let's have a look at the, uh, the ports here. So there is a full SD uh, card slot. So you could potentially use this for uh, video editing. So that SD card slot uh, for your video editing there. Um, and obviously photo import and export and file transfers, etc. Uh, for um, audio input output ports, including uh, SP diffs or digital output there, separate mic, separate headphones, separate audio out as well. So good possibilities for audio there. For USB 3 um, ports there, standard USB 3 ports, and then on the back, I'm just going to pull the power out. We can see there we have uh, power, there's that gigabit Ethernet controller, HDMI, we've got the USB C 3.1 uh, Rev 2 port there, and display port uh, there. And finally, there's a couple more, as, as if four weren't enough, another couple of USB 3 ports, and we've got our Blu-ray drive here. So it might be a little bit difficult to see that on the video, but we have um, configurable LED backlights on the uh, LEDs. Those of you that know the, uh, what's it called, the Still Series engine will know that you can configure that to uh, help you uh, find your gaming keys. And it's a little bit of show there as well, some pulsing colors, and uh, it's cool, but uh, clearly aimed at gamers that are gonna configure that properly on a per game basis. The fans have just started up on the back. There are two massive fans inside that come out the back here. So exhaust to the back, it gets warm. It doesn't get that warm on the keyboard. I'll give you some temperature measurements that we made. Um, so nicely designed fans, big fat fans inside. Check out that video that I did yesterday, uh, looking inside the uh, GT72S, and you'll see the, the design of the fans there. Six heat pipes going to those as well. Screen goes all the way back there, so that's a really nice uh, uh, angle you can get on the screen. Um, lots of flexibility there. Also, a little bit maybe too much flexibility in the screen itself, but this is a 17-inch screen. It's actually pretty difficult to keep a screen like this totally flexible without pump bumping up the weight by too much. We've put together a little uh, list of innovations, uh, a little bit of highlights on this MSI GT72 S6QE, and you'll see that we've got uh, NVIDIA's G-Sync supported on the, uh, the graphics card, um, a different chipset on the, the main board there. We've got GDDR5 uh, video graphics memory. There's that Core i7 with the unlocked uh, multiplier, and uh, we've got a turbo mode, uh, which gives us, uh, locks it to basically high performance mode, 3.7 gigahertz, by using the function F7 buttons. Um, we also have DDR4 RAM in there, and we've got, yes, the, yeah, the high-quality audio DAC inside. That's the ESS Sabre Hi-Fi, so to improve the, the sound quality for, for headsets and for recording as well. And there's confirmation that the USB-C port has a 3.1, it's a super speed or super port Rev2 with uh, Thunderbolt and DisplayPort uh, support there. So you can put two 4K monitors off a daisy, daisy chain off the back of this, no problem. Let's get on to some of our test results then, uh, getting to, to some detail about the quality of the screen first, and you'll see on the image there, center brightness 322, so not hugely bright, uh, but over 300 is probably acceptable for pretty much all indoor use, and that's obviously where this is uh, targeted. So uh, more importantly, color accuracy, we're going to go here, that's the color accuracy there and the grayscale accuracy there 3.78 2.43 actually very good color accuracies there 
and uh, no problem. Contrast, 1073 to 1. So obviously the black levels are fairly low on this. Black levels down at where? Oh yeah, 0.3. Uh, there, so nice deep black levels. Personally, out of the box, I thought it was an excellent screen. There's a slightly matte finish to it, also slightly glossy. It's sort of in between matte and glossy, and uh, a really enjoyable screen to use. There's a comparison table on the site with, with comparisons to the screen values uh, that we got in our tests across uh, a number of other similar devices. For example, the uh, Asus G751JY there. Uh, coming in fairly close figures uh, compared to the GT72S 6UE here. Obviously, more details on the website. Don't forget to check out the full review there, including uh, response times of the screen and whether there's any PWM, uh, a little image of the IPS viewing angles, and some information about the subpixels. So let's get to some information about the processor performance. Um, we'll just take our Cinebench R15 multi tester. That's a standard test we use. Good one um, to compare with other devices. 807 points there. So that's actually the uh, apart from the Schenker at the bottom there. Uh, the sorry, the second fastest in the, in that list there. Down to the single. Um, Core scores, again, the second fastest in that uh, CPU single 64-bit test. And for a good idea of the overall PC Mark score for a sort of a multimedia and office type scenario, 6,439 points, excellent top-end score, uh, really nothing to moan about. Um, it does get better with upgrades on this, dual RAID 0 SSDs, for example, 64 gigs of RAM might improve that score a bit more. But uh, in general, that's a pretty good score there on PC Mark. There's a comparison table on the website too. Let's have a quick look at that uh, SSD there. And you can see the sequential read speed there, 1.6 gigabits a second, super fast. 4K writes, 162.3 megabytes per second. There's absolutely no bottleneck in the uh, SSD here. Don't forget that there's a one terabyte spinning hard drive in here as well. So obviously your operating system goes on the SSD uh, and then game storage on the hard drive. Personally, I haven't had exposure to these high-end uh, graphics cards. This is a first for me uh, in terms of a video review, a high-end gaming laptop. So really I'm going to point towards the uh, test results now. We spent an evening playing League of Legends on it last night. Uh, naturally, no problems at all. Super smooth high settings at full HD resolution, but then that's League of Legends. We also fired up um, the latest two in the Tomb Raider series. I've yet to get some FPS figures out of that, um, but I might drop them in, the, in this review after I've, after I've made it. But there are your 3D Mark uh, 11 scores, 2013 as well. So 3D Mark 11 at 11,488 points, and I'll bring up a comparison table for you there. And obviously, the Schenker XMG U706 with the GTX 980M coming in a little bit higher, 7% faster than the, the uh, uh, GT72 62EG with the same GPU. Right, that's what you wanted to see, isn't it? A big green grid of gaming performance tests. As you can see, there's only one there that gave us a problem at 4K resolution. That's Batman, Batman Arkham Knights, the two, 2015 game, coming in at 23 um, frames a second on 4K resolution. Um, but look at that, FIFA 16, a nice 4K, 88 frames a second there. That should be a very enjoyable experience. Couple of external uh, HD monitors on this and things are gonna get really exciting. More important, I think, than the battery life figures on this are gonna be the noise figures and the heat figures. So let's start with noise. Average of 35 dBA is actually very good and uh, beats uh, a lot of other devices. Maximum of uh, 46 dBA, also not too bad. Rear exhaust and it's two big fans, so the actual the sound is not uh, a high-pitched sound, it's really just air pumping out the back behind the screen. So actually not too bad on the noise levels there with this, this model. There's the heat. Now obviously heat building up at the back because that's where it's exhausting uh, and over the top of the uh, keyboard just up here we're not seeing too much but underneath the keyboard so down here clearly gonna have a fair bit of heat and in fact uh, don't put anything 
behind the exhaust fans. This will melt a bar of chocolate in seconds. Um, it really does get warm behind there. And, uh, and underneath, fairly okay, but it's not uh, something you want to sit on your lap for a device. I mentioned that battery problem on this. Just happened. The battery's just uh, switched off. The device has just switched off. So uh, we have a little battery issue on this one. I'm sure it's just a, a loose cable and that we can uh, fix that. In fact, it is powering back up right now. So I mentioned the PSU earlier, Nine, over 900 grams worth of PSU and cable, uh, 250 plus watts of uh, power there, and it's needed because the maximum we saw under load at the wall was 230 watts there, 230.8 watts, that's that figure up there. Um, if you have a look at, uh, there's the 230.8 load maximum. If you have a look at the battery run times though, you'll get an idea of what you can do on battery, um, a, a gaming hour basically. Don't expect anything more than a gaming hour. So that's an average of 80, 80 plus watts of power usage. So that's a pretty heavy load on the on the system there. Idling four hours twenty one. This thing doesn't idle down uh, very much at all. And really, you probably don't want to use this for on the go web browsing. We didn't even bother doing the test for that. This is all about gaming and load. Um, so if you're doing rendering. CGI rendering, um, that sort of stuff, and of course gaming, that's the sort of thing you're going to get if you don't plug it in. Again, I encourage you to take a look at the uh, video we did uh, yesterday where we took the, the base off at the case office and had a look inside, have a look at, had a look at all the options for upgrading RAM. Uh, remember the two slots free on this one, four slots in total, and the SSD, four SSD slots in total, and one SATA headed bay. There's an extra two and a half inch bay there as well. Not sure what you could do with that, but uh, you could probably stick something in there and, uh, and cable up some sort of SATA extension. There's plenty of space in there to play around with it. Uh, you can access the Wi-Fi card and um, there was one other thing you can access, I can't remember. But anyway, take a look at that video and you'll see uh, the insides of the uh, GT72S. Right, if you fast forwarded to this bit, we got into a bit of detail there, but uh, I'm going to summarize it all for you now. Don't forget to give us a, a thumbs up though, don't forget to subscribe if you want to get notifications of the videos. And uh, we have got a few more coming up, I've got a couple of devices on the table behind me, including this, uh, <laughs> this baby, which would probably fit two or three times into just the lid of the GS72 here. It's the Asus 3, UX305 ZenBook with the Core M7 CPU inside. This one focused at high mobility, but it's an interesting uh, amount of actual processing power in this one. I've also got uh, um, an Asus Republic of Gamers device here that I might be bringing onto the uh, channel. And behind me, Toshiba, an Acer, and a Lenovo. That is the uh, Acer Aspire V5, I believe, with a GT940M inside. That has the uh, 940M inside, and it's the Aspire V15, so that'll be coming up soon as well. Right, here are the pros and cons of the rundown of the scores for the MSI GT72S. Lots of pros to talk about, of course. Optional overclocking on that uh, quad-core processor. Great IPS panel with good contrast and good color accuracy. GTX 980M with the 8 gigabyte. Uh, DDR5 uh, RAM, so nice uh, GPU capability there. Great number of interfaces, all distributed well, uh, especially the displays coming out the back there. Uh, the display port and the USB-C with Thunderbolt support and display port inside there as well. So plenty of options on the uh, display outputs. In terms of heat and noise, really quite good. Uh, well positioned fan outputs and the noise isn't too annoying. It can ramp up high. Um, and the heat can get high at certain positions around the back of the device, but in general it's uh, pretty good for what, uh, for, for what this device is. There's a Blu-ray burner. The speakers are excellent. There's a little subwoofer underneath. Well, if you can call that a subwoofer, but the actual sound is very immersive. You really feel that it's actually coming around you, so they've done a great job on the sound uh, coming out of this uh, uh, gaming laptop. We've got an NVMe SSD inside, which is 1.6 gigabytes per second fast, it's uh, very good, and there are options of course to upgrade SSDs as well. USB 3.1 and the G-Sync on the NVIDIA graphics card as well. We had to switch that off, off for our test, it was mess messing around with our uh, screen capture hardware, 
uh, but that G-SIG is in there. We've got some cons to talk about as well. Temporarily speed up of the fan that sometimes gets a bit loud, uh, especially when you shift to uh, high power mode. When you switch on, you also get a burst of high speed fan as well. The touchpad, personally, I found the touchpad very good. Our reviewer highlights that it might be, for some, a little bit uh, of an issue, but uh, myself and a colleague here found the actual uh, touchpad to be a nice, silky feeling and with good response. Yeah, the keyboard, well, slightly unusual font uh, and a little bit of a um, slightly unusual layout. I've got the Quartz version, the German version here, so of course for me, uh, someone who's used to English, US and English, UK layouts, that was a little bit awkward for me. Uh, so some people might have to find themselves getting used to that. On the Wi-Fi, uh, was moderate in terms of Wi-Fi range performance, but I don't think that's going to affect many people because I think you're going to be connecting up to LANs as much as you can. Well, certainly that's a, that's a tip from us anyway. Try and get connected to a LAN cable if you're doing LAN gaming. That lid, yes, okay, it could be stiffer. There's a little bit of flex, a little bit of wobble on it. Um, that might uh, upset some people. And the last point there, the inaccessible battery. You can't swap the battery out, uh, but this isn't a battery focus. This isn't a mobile fo focused laptop. So that, uh, for me, that's down the list of cons into uh, territory where you uh, really could ignore that one. Florian Glazer was our reviewer on this one and uh, Sebastian Jentsch tested this in the lab. Those are the breakdowns of the scores on a gaming weighted average score system, uh, version 5 of our specification, so don't be careful if you compare some of these uh, weighted averages with previous versions of our specification table. We've just done an upgrade to V5 on the, uh, the weightings. So if you've got uh, a gaming laptop in mind and you've got things you really need out of that gaming laptop, take a look at that breakdown of the scores and map it in there and you'll find uh, that it might suit you better than that 89%. Obviously gaming performance, we gave it a very high score there, 100%. We rated it down slightly for its weight, 73%. And for noise, we gave it 80%. Uh, so you saw a short sequence of gameplay in that uh, video. I'll play that out at the end of the, uh, of the video. And hopefully, after I've done uh, this, before I've done the editing and put this up on YouTube, I can add in a few more gameplay videos to the end of this video as well. Hope you enjoy those. And I hope you enjoyed the review. If you've got comments below, please bear in mind I'm not a gamer. I'm actually really just presenting the uh, expert review here from Notebook Check. But I did enjoy a good three hours of League of Legends and that Tomb Raider last night with some colleagues here, really is, yeah, barrier free, I keep saying that, barrier free uh, gaming there and uh, an incredible, incredibly powerful device. I like the keyboard backlight as well. Thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next Notebook Check Tech Review.